Welcome to Worship on the Web, brought to you by the British Province of Moravian Church. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you this Sunday morning, the 12th of July, 2020. I bring this opening to you from a small seaside town on a very wet and windy day, Broomsport, Northern Ireland, where I live. This morning's service will be taken by Sister Susan Foreman, a ministry student in training, and she will bring us the homily. Also taking part is Sister Ruth Biggert from University Road, and Brother Andre and Sister Alex Flemings from the Federalian Congregation. Sister Charlotte Disher from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, will also be joining us. I hope you have a blessed service, and we open by singing the hymn, In Christ Alone. Let us all sing together. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness. Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live summer it's very exciting the weather's not great but here we are on the beach and during lockdown I decided to do a bit of gardening to keep me gardening so the first thing I did I went down to the beach and I planted seeds in a bucket of sand and guess what they didn't grow so I got better I said okay let's see if the seeds plant in stone and no they didn't grow either so then I decided to plant them in soil. And look, my seeds have started to grow. And I learned to plant these seeds in soil because I read from Matthew, the book of Matthew in the Bible, and it told me that if I plant my seeds in good soil, they would grow. And I think as you go about your summer holiday and go to the beach, be good with your friends. Stay with good people. Don't let yourself grow in sand. Don't let yourself grow in stones. But grow in good soil 
as the Bible says. Rain and snow fall from the sky. They don't return without watering the ground. They cause the plants to sprout and grow, and the plants make seeds for the farmer. And from these seeds, people have bread to eat. The words I say do the same thing. They will not return to me empty. They make the things happen that I want to happen. They succeed in doing what I send them to do. So you will go out with joy. You will be led out in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you. All the trees in the field will clap their hands. And now, let us join in singing. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face his wounds that mother chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, continuing to 18 through to 23. That same day Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such large crowds gathered round him that he had to get into a boat, and he sat there. The people all stood on the shore, and he told them many things in parables. He said, listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up at once because there was no depth of soil. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Anyone who has ears should listen. 
So pay attention to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the seed that, that was sown on the edge of the path. The seed sown on patches of rock is someone who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy. But such a person has no roots deep down and does not last. Should some trial or some persecution on account of the word arise, at once he falls away. The seed sown in thorns is someone who hears the word, but the worry of the world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so it produces nothing. And the seed sown in rich soil is someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who yields a harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Jesus, you saw yourself, the word of truth generously, the word of life graciously. Defend us from the evil one who seeks to snatch us away. Fortify us for hard times and costly discipleship that we may endure. Deliver us from distraction, from worldly desires, all that would lure us and choke us with false promises. Till us, turn us, enrich us with every blessing of your spirit, that we may be good, good soil, forever faithful and fruitful for you. And we join together now to say the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life. Lord of all we look to, provide us with growth and a willing heart to do your will. Take all we have, the challenges and the changes, and our heartfelt prayer to transform us into the people you have purposed us to be, that we may do all in your strength and your love. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Today we will be looking at one of my favourite Bible stories, the parable of the sower, which is taken from Matthew chapter 13. This is a parable that Jesus told about growing in response to hearing his words about his kingdom. A parable is a comparison story with a hidden meaning, a meaning that we need to think about, images that are deeper than the surface level. The story is told to a crowd who gathered to hear Jesus, but the disciples were also listening and needed clarity in their understanding. This reminds us that it is okay to ask questions when we don't understand, when we don't understand what we hear or we read in the Bible. It is especially good for young people to ask questions when they don't understand things, but remember, always do this in love. Therefore, you can approach our ministers or others or Jesus in prayer. That's a good place to start with your questions, to deepen your understanding. Even before Jesus begins to unpack the story of the sower, he reminds the disciples that they are blessed as their eyes and their ears have heard the word of God. And because they are seeing the impact of Jesus' work, as he fulfills God's prophecy and does the work of God. The disciples are absorbing what they see, the actions of Jesus and the ways of God, as they seek to understand the plans of God, the prophecies. They have the privilege to see it lived out in their presence. Jesus assures the disciples that they have been blessed to know the secrets of the kingdom. In the same way, we are also blessed to know about God's kingdom. As we seek further understanding today, may God continue to bless you. The parable is about a sower who went out to sow seeds. 
I am sure that the sower expected good growth from these seeds. However, as he sowed the seeds, they all fell in different places. Some fell on the path and very soon were eaten by birds. Some fell on the rocks, not enough soil here, so they dried up quickly in the heat of the sun. Others fell amongst the thorns. The thorns grew quickly and choked the fragile plant. And some seeds fell on good ground. This produced a crop, some of a hundredfold, some of sixty and some of thirty. When we look at the parable of the sower, Jesus also warns the people in the crowd not to close their hearts, but to choose understanding and to choose to listen to his words. Jesus wants people to be able to see, to listen and hear what God is saying, because when we hear the word of God and understand it, it will be possible to experience growth and fulfilment in life with Christ. And then it will be possible to become co-workers, to build his kingdom through producing a good harvest of hope, a harvest of serving and a harvest of getting involved in the work of the church through offering ourselves in service for others. Let us listen with expectation and seek to find understanding whilst we look closely at the story of the sower so that the words of Jesus may sink into our life Allowing, allowing us to grow in character and strength as Christ would like us to grow. In the gospel readings, we are told that the sower goes out to scatter the seeds. This seed can be seen as seed of the word of God. What things will help us to receive the word? A humble heart, ears that are open and eyes that are willing to see from God's perspective. An understanding heart that is not distracted by worldly things, but a heart that is able to reflect the promises of God. A willing heart that is able to show mercy in the ways we behave and to show love to others through our actions. We turn into the parable of the sower in Matthew's Gospel. Let us look at where the seeds fell. Some seeds fell along the path, the roadside, but the birds came along and ate the seeds so these seeds didn't have a chance to survive. This is similar to people who hear the word, the message of Jesus, but don't understand it. And before they have a chance to receive it, the word is rejected and quickly disappears from their hearts and mind. Next, we have people where the seed is sown as a word, but the seed falls on the rocky ground. And here the seed is unable to gain depth to grow. The word, the word of God, does not remain there. There's not enough soil. There is no depth. The plant, being unable to grow, is scorched quickly by the sun's heat. The words of Jesus do not receive a welcome here and stay only temporarily, as there is no real understanding or acceptance of God's word. In this instance, when persecution or troubles and challenges occur, the seed is unable to grow. The word of God, his promises do not take effect. The heart is unable to receive the word and this seed is also destroyed. The thorny ground is a hostile place where the seed is sown. The roots cannot take hold and the thorns quickly come up and choke the plants. These plants are unstable. They are choked by the cares of this world and the worries of life. They are weighed down by circumstances, circumstances which challenge them. But we know that even in these unhelpful situations, God's help is present. His grace can make a difference. Now I imagine that a heart that welcomes a seed will begin to know Christ and will begin to seek growth and Christ will take root. The soil of the heart would not need to work with stones of rejections or rocks of unbelief. It would allow the cleansing water of the Holy Spirit to begin its work 
so that growth can occur. When we trust in Jesus in every situation, Christians can make a difference. Even in this time of COVID-19 where difficulties exist, we can show others how Christians have seeds of hope, seeds of trusting in God for a better future. Isaiah 55 reminds us that as God sends water throughout the earth, he is also able to make bread to provide for our every earthly need. His words have a purpose and will be fulfilled and will succeed as he has planned. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah also tells us that God invites us to come to him, to be in his presence, because the sower watches over the seeds that he has planted, just as he watches over us and over all our challenges. He keeps us safe and he watches over our souls. God directs the rain to water the earth and to bring forth seeds. God's word will accomplish what needs to be done. It will bring forth the expectations of his kingdom. We are told that God's word will not return void. God the farmer gives us words of joy and peace. His words, when planted in our hearts, do not return void. Water encourages growth within our hearts, the water of his love, the water of his care. Despite our sorrows and fears, he is the keeper of our souls. I will close with a reflection from John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist Church and influenced by the Moravians. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, at all the times you can, and to all the people you can. I believe that in this way your seeds will grow and bear fruits. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now, let us join in singing. you enjoyed today's online service and we're now going to close by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed our worship this morning. This past week, Church House has reopened and it is really wonderful to be speaking to you today from our chapel in Church House. Staff have returned along with PEC members, Mark and myself, and Church House will be open uh, for our office hours between nine and five, Monday to Friday. At the moment, the mission flat the archives and library, along with the bookshop, do remain closed to visitors coming into Church House. However, you can still make purchases or make inquiries at the archive um, by contacting us either through email or through the telephone. 
As ever, if you have any questions or comments in the week ahead, please do get in touch. We know that this is a time of change and adjustment as our churches begin to look forward in the hopes that we can return to our buildings very soon. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I look forward to seeing you next week. Goodbye. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought.